A police department in California recently added Tesla vehicles to their fleet and the internet went crazy. In this video, I want to address 12 of the comments made both in favor and against this move by the Anaheim Police Department. Those of you that have followed my channel for the last three years should remember that at some point I put all of my eggs in one basket by going electric and buying a Tesla Model Y. My wife and I only had one vehicle to do all things, but our driving pattern is that of very long trips on the weekend and this is where the Model Y fell out of favor with us. We put 26,000 miles in 21 months, but the vast majority of these miles were highway miles and trips within California, but we also went to Vegas a few times and even across the United States to the state of Florida. And that's where the Model Y didn't do great. The charging experience was just too time consuming for us. As a rule of thumb, I could say that I was adding one hour of charging to every three hours of driving. So supercharging got old really quick. Also, we didn't have a home charger, which wasn't the biggest problem because my wife's commute to work is so short that she could literally go weeks without having to recharge. But if we wanted to make a long trip somewhere, we would have to charge the vehicle the night before and then during, 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 and then after to leave it ready for the next day. And just because it didn't work for us, it doesn't mean that I don't consider the Model Y to be a great vehicle all around. Yeah, it's kind of played out because here in San Diego we see threes and Ys everywhere, but I still think that it's a great vehicle. And like always, hold this preamble to get to the topic. Uh, now some police departments are adopting EVs. Some people question if the EVs can work as police vehicles. The first police vehicle was actually an EV, and that was back in 1899. How ironic is that? You say Tesla Model Y a good candidate to be retrofitted for police work. Well, the Anaheim Police Department seems to think so. They say that they're facing a shortage of reliable vehicles and maintenance costs are adding up. So their answer was the Model Y. Is it a reliable vehicle? Absolutely. JD Power rates the Model Y 77 out of 100, which puts it slightly above average. The battery of a Model Y, which is the most expensive component, has a lifespan of 150 to 200,000 miles. Different police departments deadline their cars at different ages, but a police vehicle that has 100,000 miles may have thousands and thousands of idling hours, so a seemingly lower mileage police car may have more wear and tear than meets the eye. So I do not consider an electric vehicle to be at a disadvantage in the perception of longevity versus an internal combustion engine car. The Anaheim Police Department makes it clear that this is just a pilot program, so it's not like they're going to phase out all of their gas engine cars in favor of EVs. The spokesperson for the department stated that they opted for the Model Y out of necessity due to supply shortages issues in other brands. He says that these six vehicles have been minimally modified and equipped with service radios, lights, and sirens. They expect these vehicles to be out on patrol, but in case of a pursuit, they intend to have a gas engine vehicle present in any pursuit involving any of the Tesla vehicles. This car present a bigger price tag to the department, he says, but they expect to offset this cost with the, what they save on maintenance. Regarding the expected driving range, I think the Anaheim Police Department is in for a surprise because they expect 260 miles of range when the average shift puts between 80 to 120 miles a day, so they expect the range of a Model Y to suffice a taller shift. But in real life, it's not going to be as simple because if you charge the Model Y to 80%, which gives them that, that math of 260 miles, and then drive throughout the shift, well, as a police officer, my guess is you're driving a vehicle that is an emergency vehicle that has to be ready for the unforeseen even at the end of the shift. So you, you will need to have more than 50% of the battery. And remember that some of the features of the Model Y are cut when you go below 20%. So how is how is it going to be good for an officer to be out on patrol with close to 20%? I don't know, but my guess is that at some point they're going to have to go recharge more than once during the shift. Because I don't have a full spec sheet of the vehicle, I don't want to make a lot of assumptions. It seems like the back seat has been retrofitted for one passenger or maybe two that are divided by that plexiglass. So I don't want to make too many assumptions. So let's move on to the comments and I'm going to concentrate on the ones that caught my eye. Some of those are kind of repetitive, so I think these comments are going to be a good depiction of the sentiment that this addition of six Model Y vehicles to the Anaheim Police Department fleet uh, created on YouTube. 
So let's go with Moondog991 says maintenance costs were too high. So you went with Tesla. What? Well, regular maintenance costs are lower with the Model Y than they are with a typical police cruiser. The 2020 police interceptor utility, which is a Ford Explorer, calls for an oil change every 5,000 miles. And a lot of police departments shorten that interval for that oil change just to keep the vehicle running in optimal condition. And this is the ridiculously simple Tesla Model Y service schedule. It calls for brake fluid every four years, AC desiccant bag replacement every four years, a cabin air filter replacement every two years, a HEPA filter replacement every three years, and to clean and lubricate the brake calipers every 12,500 miles if it is driven in an area where roads are salted during the winter. I mean, these vehicles are going to be deployed in Anaheim, yeah, so they're not going to see a lot of salted roads in their lifetime. So as you can see, there's a clear advantage for the Model Y. The super simple schedule maintenance not only keeps the car available for use, but also saves money on having the car sent to the garage or taking it to the dealership for service. Kelly Blue Book estimates that the cost of an oil change for a Ford Explorer to be between $80 to $100. So let's move on to another comment. This one is by Caliber X 427 says, Hertz just sold one third of their EV fleet that they purchased only a few months ago, mostly Teslas due to the high maintenance and repair costs. That's actually false in part. Forbes says regarding the issue, Hertz reported several reasons for the sale. Many of the reasons actually stem from the unfamiliarity that many customers had with EVs, especially Teslas when having their first experience with one. Hertz reported Tesla renters were getting in more crashes, costing more per crash, and the customers simply were not requesting them at the rate they expected. So as you can see, it was more because the person was not used to driving a Tesla. And yes, it seems from what it says there, that once they get an accident, it was more expensive to repair. And you can read the whole article, but in summary, it just says that, that people just weren't familiar with uh, how an EV drives. Therefore, they were getting into more accidents. There's a learning curve to driving a Tesla, but overall, you get used to the way a Tesla drives within the first few days. Things like the instant torque, uh, single pedal driving, and charging the vehicle. At Clues 502, imagine running out of batteries while in a pursuit. Well, this actually can happen, um, but it also can happen with the gas engine car. But keep in mind that these vehicles are getting deployed in city driving and they're not highway patrol vehicles. So city driving is where they do best with regenerative braking. That is where actually a Tesla Model Y is the most efficient driving in city. So yeah, you can run out of battery, but I would throw a documented counter argument. In 1990, there was a, it's called the SSP Mustang. That was basically a Mustang 5.0 that was used by many police forces as a highway patrol vehicle. And it had an estimated range of as much as 338 miles, but as little as 231 miles. Yet nobody complained about that choice of police vehicle. Wait, there was no social media back then. So if you wanted to complain, you would have to subscribe to magazines like Motor Trend, get the magazine and write, put your letter in the mail for your voice to be heard. So maybe that's why people did not complain as much back then. And I found an interesting article that says that the average speed during an LAPD car chase was about 46 miles per hour and that the average distance covered by an LAPD pursuit was about 4.71 miles with 53% of pursuits covering less than two miles. So as you can see, a Model Y's charge will suffice in case of a police chase and that the success of a police pursuit does not necessarily depend on how fast police cars are. Garrett's has non 683 says that thing will last 21 months and then boom, eight to $11,000 battery replacement. Well, the batteries normally last a lot more, but if one needs replacement, it is way more expensive than that more like $15,000, but yes, batteries are expensive. And my concern is that those vehicles don't have enough uh, ground clearance. But like I said, I don't have access to the spec sheet, so it's unknown to me whether they reinforce the bottom to protect against damage from hitting a curve or something. But if they did, then it's gonna add to the lack of ground clearance. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Brain Wong 445 says, this is crazy, total waste of taxpayer money. Majority of the nation are using those four SUVs and they seem to be quite reliable to me. 
the Ford Explorer is actually pretty reliable. AOMCars.com says this. The latest 2021 Ford Explorers are receiving a reliability rating of great from JD Power and Associates and in their vehicle dependability studies. For 2021 model year, ownership satisfaction skyrockets with 96% of Ford Explorers owners recommending it according to cars.com. Interesting. A Ford. Reliable. Who would have thought, right? Next, we have at Andrew Clark 6802 says, LOL, imagine them trying to do a pit maneuver and then the stupid car corrects itself. What a joke. I'm guessing he's talking about the lane keeping assist and uh, the vehicle avoidance system that it has, that if a vehicle gets too close to you, the Tesla will swerve away. And I think this is a reasonable concern and I do not know if Anaheim will use these vehicles for pit maneuvering and if they do, are they overriding the software that comes from the factory to allow the vehicle to ignore erratic maneuvering? Good question. But keep in mind that not all police vehicles are designated pursuit vehicles and that not all police vehicles are meant for pit maneuvering. Example, police motorcycles. At AVO MNT 7944 says, where is my 911 response? People are getting shot. 911 operator. The Tesla has two more hours of charge or apologies. Many exclamation marks. This is another catastrophic comment. There will only be six Teslas in a fleet of I don't know how many, and the Model Y doesn't take two hours to charge at a supercharger. Try more like 30 minutes to 80%. The next one says, at ML underscore 6160 says, wait until they get an emergency call and that thing decides to upgrade itself. I'm guessing that ML means update itself, these over-the-air updates don't happen randomly. They are announced, scheduled, and can be overridden. Again, an unlikely scenario where there's only six Model Ys in a pool of many more fleet vehicles. Next one. Derek Arama says, Love it. They'll get 250 mile per hour cars that require almost no maintenance and last longer than a patrol car. Well, there's not a Model Y that can go that fast. Try more like 155 miles per hour. Harmic 6818 says, wow, when cop cars get into wrecks, they get to enjoy internal flamethrowers that the fire department gets to watch. But despite what you see in Hollywood movies, not every car crash ends in a car exploding and into flames. I like what I read in an article from Box.com where it says that electric vehicles catch fire less often than gas engine cars, but that these fires present a challenge because they are electrical fires that are addressed differently from traditional fires. And I'll leave you the link for you to read. And let's move on to the next one by JDOT Vegas that says, turn on lights and sirens and loses 80 miles of range. This is a good one. And I actually have the same concern um, because with an EV, any use of electric components in the vehicle takes a toll on the range of the battery. In a vehicle that is gas operated, an idling engine keeps recharging the battery via the alternator, but in EVs, they don't idle. So when they come to a full stop, they just sit there. So I wonder how they will meet the demands of the extra emergency equipment installed on the vehicle for police use. That's a good one. And I need an engineer to walk me through this one. Please. And the last one, because we don't want to be here all day by just Johnny. He says their maintenance cost is going to get higher. Also, I don't think Tesla is a safe choice for the officers, but he hasn't explained why. Is a Model Y a safe choice for an officer? This is a comment that has a lot of replies back and forth about how good and how bad a Model Y is in the case of an accident or a shootout. In the case of a shootout, police officers often use their vehicle as a barrier, but there's only a handful of areas of a vehicle that have the ability to maybe stop a bullet, depending on the caliber. The engine block could stop a bullet and maybe the axles and the rims of a gas engine car. In the case of a Model Y with dual motors, I just don't know how dense these electric motors are and if they have the capability to stop a bullet, And but they have two, right? So let's say they do stop a bullet, well, in a dual motor, you have an extra spot and at the right angle, maybe it could help you. But again, there are cops using motorcycles and I do not remember this level of animosity. Also, from what I see in the video, it's hard to see, but it seems like the rear seat only has room for one passenger or maybe two that are divided by that plexiglass, like I said earlier. But I wonder if the cage is modified to protect the glass roof. Also, the windows are frameless and I just don't know if they are as safe in transporting a detainee as what I see in other traditional police cars. 
In my opinion, the suspension of the Model Y just doesn't have enough travel to withstand heavy duty police work. Police cars often go over curves and medians and the Model Y just doesn't have the hardware to withstand such abuse. The clearance is about six inches off the ground, not enough to clear traditional scenarios cops encounter. So they're gonna have to be extra careful in protecting that battery. So if there is a, like a skid plate for the battery, then that's still gonna diminish the ground clearance even further. So time will tell if the Anaheim Police Department made the right choice in going partially electric. The Model Y as a police cruiser offers advantages and disadvantages, but the topic is polarizing, like anything that involves Tesla these days. And of course, this is not the first police department to adopt EVs in their fleets, and my guess is that it won't be the last one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.